Welcome to Realism Overhaul. We've got a brand new day, a fresh new start on the series. 1.7.3 is working like a charm so far. And well, we all know it all starts with sounding rockets, but um, like I've mentioned previously, or if you're tuning into this playlist for the first time, for the first time we are going to be focusing not on sounding rockets as much and putting our focus mostly on crewed flights. Unfortunately, we can't do everything crewed. Uh, we're gonna have to get through the early game with some of these sounding rockets and then downrange contracts and satellite contracts and all that. But all the while, we're not going to lose focus on our crew. And hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be able to keep them from retiring. And this is something that we've never done before, never really even attempted to do before. And so far, it's looking all right, although I'm not sure how sustainable it is. As of recording this episode, we've pushed back the retirement dates on all four of the starting Kerbals a few months, and we've, um, we've been, we've went through two years, so we are finishing up the last quarter of 1952 as of this episode. But to talk a little bit about the flight on hand, this is the K-4. And what's not shown in this episode is the build of the K-1, the K-2, and the K-3. The K-1 is a sort of a, it's the first thing I decided to build. It's, it's a bomber fuselage and wingspan in which I've swapped out engines a few times. And I've been debating trying to use it to complete X-Plane contracts. The K-2 is a twin prop plane engine fighter. I'm well, not fighter. I called it that, but it, there's no weapons in the game, so it's not really more a fighter. It's more of just a prop airplane. Um, capable of sub Mach 1 flight because prop engines in 1951. Um, and I used that initially to grab some science. We got 12.4 science out of that first flight of the K-2. Uh, the K-3 is, I believe, the first uh, plane that had these engines that you see on this flight here on the K-4, but it only had two of them. And with the K-4, well, we added two more of these engines. And on this flight, it was able to break the sound barrier. We had a contract to do so. and. When it's in a shallow dive, we were able to break 350 meters per second or so. Coming to the stop, next up we have the S2 rocket, which is an unguided rocket capable of reaching suborbital flight and returning safely with parachutes. And this is the exact contract that it was able to complete the suborbital return, as well as some altitude sounding contracts as well. This particular flight, I believe, was in 1952, and this rocket has seen, um, I believe, two flights so far. The engine being, um, if I'm not mistaken, the A4 engine, which, although has a alarmingly high uh, percentage for failure rate, it's a like 9% ignition failure rate and 16 to 20% full burn failure rate. We've experienced zero engine failure so far, which is luckily for us. The first two years have experienced no failures whatsoever. And I'm not sure if I should be rejoicing or be worried, but you know, we're gonna take that um, as it comes. Um, yeah, the A4 engine, it's very crude engine and we've had no problems at all. And this is a good thing because that same A4 engine, we've strapped onto the end of this aircraft here. Now, I do not have the mod Terabee installed, as of this episode at least, so I don't have access to the XLR-11, which would be generally the engine you would use for rocket plane contracts. So what I intended to do instead was have a cockpit at the front end of an A4 rocket and slap some wings on it. 
And initially, I didn't plan on launching from the launch pad with those clamps like that. Initially, I had built the K1 to carry such an aircraft as this up to an altitude and drop it from its wing before lighting the A4 and completing any contracts with it. However, the first contract we have for rocket planes was to reach 12 and a half kilometers and 320 meters per second, which this does easily. And the next one we've unlocked right afterwards, which we haven't flown yet, is pretty much to do the same thing, except reach 15 kilometers instead, which I guarantee is also possible with this exact same flight path. All we have to do is pitch up slightly more and glide up to 15 kilometers, which I really don't have any doubts of this being able to do. Now gliding back to the runway is something I tested a lot in simulations and what I was able to come up with is using the gears and air brakes to slow the airspeed down to a little over 100 meters per second um, approaching the runway uh, would give us a good enough speed to be able to glide and land perfectly fine on the runway itself. This was surprisingly aerodynamic considering it was pretty much just thrown together, but um, I was very happy with the results. The overall results was about 720 or 30 some meters per second speed, and we I think almost reached 13 kilometers with this particular flight. Linked below, as well as in my Discord, will be the quarterly report for this series. It's just a spreadsheet um, which will go quarter by quarter, um, a mission summary, our funds, our science gained, our tech levels, and all of that good stuff. If you for some reason would care to take a look, it should be in the description of every video from here on out. And like I said, as well as in my Discord, also linked below there will be the N9SA roster, basically all of the Kerbalnauts, um, how their flight time, their missions flown and status and all that. And if you head by my Discord, you can make a Kerbal for yourself to have in the series when we're able to hire it at least, and you'll be able to keep up on their status there. And we're gliding back to the runway for another successful flight. First time reaching Mach 2, I'm sure our pilot is happy. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.